Metal Brock RPM aluminum cylinder heads for a traditional Pontiac V8. Doing a little bit of an update on the progress of the port work. Um, I was going to show you how well that blends. You know, once you get close enough, you can see the gasket match making everything as flat and transition as smooth as possible. And on this side, the pushrod wall has been radiused and transitioned. On this side, I'm not done with that yet, that one yet, but you can see that weird casting dip that Pontiac puts in there. I don't know why they, I don't know. It's very odd that that thing, because it's on pretty much every port. I've got it worked out of some of them. This one had a really deep casting irregularity. If you'll look in, gosh it's hard to see, this left hand port right here, those little bumps and gouges behind the valve guide, that is casting porosity, which is really similar to, gosh the way it looks to me is when you uh, don't put enough water in your oatmeal or something then they do the casting let me see if you can see that from the bowl I mean if you can gosh if this fuck the glare is what's killing me but it's super rough it does you no matter what you do you can't get a super smooth finish to the aluminum because it's almost like it's where they when they mix their the molten aluminum it's not pure. Something isn't pure enough, or I don't know that much about foundering aluminum. But I would say one, two, three, at least three or four of the ports on these heads have some pretty significant porosity issues. Gosh, you can really see it. It stands out like a sore thumb to me, but maybe you guys can't see it on the video. But uh, the gasket match and the blend is going really well. Uh, you know, I'm very optimistic for these heads flowing as much or more is what I guaranteed the customer. But I always like to shoot a little low on my estimates. That way they're always happy and they tell their friends and other people want to get something done. So uh, that push rod wall is pretty much done on the left not on the right because you can see that crazy dip that they put in it and you can also see floors when you look at the transition on a floor oh, see if I can get this angle you want to straighten out that the, which is the roof because the height of your roof is not going to be a detriment because you want that air to be flying through there as fast as you can. But if you look down here at one that I haven't really worked as much, or I haven't cleaned it up at all really, it has like a ski jump. It comes from the port and jumps up or down, I guess it would be towards the head. So I, I flatten all that out and give it a lot better you know transition that way that air don't run into any problems to really work these heads I haven't done it yet the, these Pontiac Edelbrock heads are perfect candidates for tubes I haven't integrated tubing heads into my porting yet but I'm telling you if you can look right here is a bolt hole this is a head bolt hole. Because that bolt hole is there, there's huge obstruction on each port on that inside wall. This head would be absolutely perfect for tubing. Because if you could, you know, take out a big portion of that obstruction on that inside wall, especially where that air is going to be curving, it's going to be following that stupid wall. If you could take the majority of that bulge out and then seal that cavity with a tube, 
it'd be a huge improvement on airflow. Uh, same same scenario, you know, as I mentioned in previous videos, you know, your push rod runs straight through this head just behind my fingernail. So if you could cut this wall, this entrance wall alone, if you could straight cut that wall and blend it into the port and tube that push rod hole, Man, these things would flow like crazy. I, I wouldn't be surprised if these things wouldn't flow 340 CFM with just those two modifications. And I might venture to do some tubes, you know, because if you're going to try to build big horsepower, you got to do all the tricks to try to get there. But, I mean, as far as cutting down that bulge, kind of hard to see you can you can whittle it down a little bit but don't get crazy with it and it, you know you can improve the airflow just by cleaning up that port taking all the casting flash trying to get all the cross-sectional areas the same really like the way the bowls turned out the uh, bowl cut and bowl blends Kind of hard to see. I have not finished the bowls on the exhaust, and I'll tell you why. These engine, or I'm sorry, these heads came off of an engine that was having horrible problems pushing oil through the engine. Part of the problem was the rocker arm studs protrude into the intake ports you always have to put thread sealer on your rocker arm studs when they poke into your intake ports because oil even when those studs are torqued or oil will find its way into those intake ports well the oil and gasoline was a, a huge problem in the intake ports of course but all that oil got burnt up in the exhaust side and I, it's a huge pain in the neck trying to pour it on that exhaust side of these aluminum heads I guess the aluminum isn't a major factor but it's a huge pain in the neck to try to do the exhaust side because there's so much carbon and burnt oil inside that exhaust port specifically the bowl area that it just immediately gums up your carbide burrs. I spend more time running this stupid, you know, running my bench grinder on the wheel, trying to clean all the black goop out of my carbide burrs as I'm trying to work those exhaust ports. So, again, my stupid air compressor, which will be replaced, I guarantee it, because all I have is a 30 gallon Craftsman with one of these oilless beltless pumps number one these things are loud as hell I hate it but I've had it for a really long time and it's always you know eventually got me through my porting jobs but now this thing is just I don't know there's something wrong with that cylinder that, that builds the compression and you can only run it for a short amount of time after you fill up the tank to full pressure, which is normally around 140 to 150, then you can port for a while, but as soon as that thing depletes its reserve, it'll get down to around 15 pounds of pressure and it'll get mattered and I don't know what, and it'll stop building pressure altogether. And at that point, you either just have to turn it off and let it rest, or you have to uh, just let it run on it, you know, until it finally builds up a whole tank of pressure again. I kind of got, I don't want to say I got ripped off because it was free, <clears throat> but there was a guy I know that was giving away this air compressor on Craigslist. Well, naturally, uh, when I looked at the ad, because he was basically just wanting somebody to haul it off, I thought this engine was bigger than it was because I had schemes of putting a larger belt-driven pump 
on my 30 gallon tank and apparently this little motor only goes up to around 120 pounds of pressure or something of that nature so I'm not going to really be able to get away with using this to upgrade my big tank I'm probably going to have to do some shopping and find a what I'd like to have is get a little five horse electric motor and a I don't know how they rate those pumps but the compressor pump I want it to be belt driven and put out enough volume so I can fill up my 30 gallon tank and run my die grinders without you know running the stupid thing down all the time but I uh, picked this up and again it was free so I'm not bitching too much but I thought this pump because it's super quiet when you turn this one on you can actually talk on the phone listen to the radio or whatever while it's running it just has a nice even tone to it compared to the obnoxious noise that stupid oilless compressor makes but research tells me this pump isn't going to be quite big enough to handle that 30 gallon tank so I'm looking at a twin cylinder belt driven pump with a five horse electric motor and I'll probably run the regulators and everything on this because this thing is rated up to 150 pounds it has a nice setup for, for the tank itself so I think all my electrical over here and my pop off valves and all that will work perfect I thought about using this electric motor because it's big it's way bigger than the one on that other compressor but for some reason the information sticker on it does not tell you what the horsepower rating of it is so I'm real not <laughs> I don't want to say I'm scared but I'm a little hesitant to try to use that motor to turn my new compressor pump because what I'm gonna do is get a new uh, make a new plate to mount to the top of this tank and try to finagle a belt driven pump on top of here that will actually keep up with my work so anyway I just want to give you guys a little update and I apologize because I'm not done with these heads yet I intended to be done with them by now life happened and then this stupid tank is so hard to deal with because you can only work a little bit at a time but you know they're coming along and I you know I promise this customer will receive heads that flow as much or more as what I promised him so I will I will I'm gonna put this in stone I will have these heads done next week because his short block is supposed to be done at the machine shop next week so we need to get this motor put together uh, like I don't know if I mentioned it before or not but these are going on a stroker Pontiac V8 I believe it ends up being like a 461 cubic inch but it's got the smaller main bearings and H-beam rods and forged steel cranks so with the solid roller cam and my porting on these heads um, it'll easily make 600 plus horsepower if not 650 so he'll have uh, more than twice the horsepower that he had before and I've warned him don't underestimate how much power you're gonna make because 600 plus horsepower is not a beginner engine under any circumstances and I don't want a phone call from his wife who was expecting their first child in October to call me and tell me he wrecked his car or otherwise hurt himself with this stupid motor so anyway we're, this is an update on the Pontiac aluminum heads uh, we're still working on that other project with the uh, 600 horse 4.3 turbo typhoon and we'll get some more update videos as soon as possible thank you again for watching